All right, so you have a favorite athlete. You want to look like them. You want to move like them. So that means you just got to train like them, right? Not necessarily. That's what we're going to talk about in today's episode, how you should work out if you want to be like your favorite athlete. This, uh, one of my I always wanted athletes. to be like Bo Jackson. Yeah. yeah. Oh, greatest athlete. One of the yeah, greatest athletes. Should have just trained like him. Yeah, I think, um, first I think we should talk about the misconceptions around athletic training. Um, number one, training like somebody is not a guarantee at all uh, that you'll look like them or... It's actually almost a guarantee you won't. It, it very. <laughs> yep. That's more true than what I than yes. thinking you will. Right? Yes, yeah. 100%. Yeah. You know, not to interrupt your, your... But Justin just said something that actually just made me kind of think like, what are the most iconic... Uh, pictures or covers of magazines of athletes that caused that like you said one right now the Bo Jackson well, yeah, you behind remember? yeah see you remember that oh, oh yeah double bicep he that's, had the bat behind that's, that's, him with the oh, shoulder that. pads okay. there's a Reggie Bush one yeah. so look at the Reggie Bush Sports Illustrated cover um Trying to think of another one like that. Where, Actually, LL Cool J, but he's an entertainer. No, that's, that's a good, that's a fair one. Yeah, I'm thinking of like, hey, you're right, he was not technically an athlete, but there's there's definitely I mean, been. I like, the, I like I, Muhammad Ali, but uh, as a kid, the one where he's doing this and he just knocked down Sonny Liston. That was uh, especially for the time. Oh, yeah. Did, yeah. Did, did, I don't remember. Like, so that goes too far back for me to, I definitely don't remember people talking about like his body. I'm thinking of pictures you're like that Bo body. Jackson picture was so famous yeah. that. People wanted to train to look like that. The yeah. Reggie Bush uh, Sports Illustrated article, people wanted to train so they could look like him. Was I, it Terrell Owens? I mean, uh, he had like... There was a football one where he's like Yeah, this. there was one, That's like famous. an iconic picture of him, I know. There's the... Who did the naked one where he has got a football covering himself and he looks all shredded. There's de there's definitely a, like a... There's got to be... Somebody has got to ma have made something on the internet that's like the top 10... Athletic, athletic bodies, athletic body yeah. photos that everybody like aspired to be like. But every time one of those comes out, you get everybody you know, wants to know how they work. We did out. one one time, and again back to the actor. It wasn't an athlete. What was the guy who did the the, the movie, the young kid, uh, Zach Efron, when he yeah. did the uh, when, he, yeah. when he did the Baywatch? Yeah. There's the, there's that one right there. Right? Yeah. That's no, the I mean yeah, it's like action heroes now too. That's the big thing with like your Marvel superheroes. And yeah, like people really see them get in incredible shape, like your Thor. I think and it's important to understand with with sports, especially at this level, especially at professional level, um, they don't work out to look good at all. They could care less. Yep. It's a side effect. They work out for maximum performance. In fact, they work out uh, so much for maximum performance, or that's such a, a singular goal, that they compromise their health and longevity. And and they would compromise their aesthetics if that were the case as well. Oftentimes, their, their bodies reflect um, their, their fitness um, and their athletic performance, but how they look is not something they even care about. It's really about performing and it, one athlete i can think about that does not look like someone that works out would be fedor uh, Emelianenko. yeah um, one of the greatest mma fighters of all time this guy looked like a kind of a chubby dude that looked like he drank beer every day and yet here he was you know beating the crap out of everybody or our uh, local with incredible guy. fitness our local guy from uh um, velasquez uh no not even worse than kane uh what's his name uh it, it's uh ufc heavyweight Rashad? no ufc heavyweight uh only person to even give john jones a run for his money why can't I not think of his name right now? Isn't that Rashad Evans? No, oh, no, oh, yeah. no, no, no. Yeah, he's no, local. I know you're talking about. Yeah. He's local too. Why can't I think? Of, he's an announcer now too. Oh, he's yeah, like, yeah, yeah, Slipping yeah, yeah, yeah. Slipping I mean, he's like looks so out of shape, and yeah. but he has had some of the best cardio. And these guys work out like crazy. Yes, yes. So yeah. it's it's a terrible. It's a terrible way to gauge is somebody working out effectively because. First of all, genetics play a massive role. These in these are genetic anomalies. When you're looking at that level of athletic performance, what you have is a unique combination of extremely rare genetics, extremely rare athletic genetics, to the point where these pros would be better than you at a sport that they never played or practiced. They could pick up almost any sport and would probably dominate 99%. I remember the story you guys tell of those uh, 49ers who were football yeah. players yeah. who played pickup basketball with all you guys and just were dunking, mm -hmm. um, even though none of them really played basketball. Yeah. They're genetic anomalies, so their bodies react and respond to uh, workouts very differently than our do, uh, ours do. How rare are their, their genetics? I mean, as rare as, as it is to see someone that's over seven foot tall, for example. So you don't want to copy the routine of a genetic anomaly because- you don't, 
you're not anywhere in the same universe uh, as that individual. And so their workouts not only are, are going to be wrong for you, they're going to be so wrong yeah. that they'll probably cause DC. you to injure yourself. Uh, or what did you say? It was DC. Thank you. Hey, there you yeah, go. Daniel Sorry. Cormier. That I was, was like, was why can I? Why? I'm so Cormier. mad at you guys for not being able to get that answer. Yes. No, I've, I've actually trained in a gym where he. He's, he's a local guy. He's, he's, he's from great. around yeah. here. Yeah, he's, he's very one of my favorite. And he's very fit, very athletic. And, and he looks like he's a mean, yes. mean yes. bad dude. He's bad a bad dude. dude. Yeah. And, yes, but they're, but the, the type of genetics that these athletes have are special and unique for their specific sport. So this is why. High level swimmers look very different from high level um, sprinters, or why professional football players look very different from professional baseball players, or from other or, or a tennis player. Right? Um, they they were literally born to be excellent at that particular sport, and then you combine that with hard work, um, and you combine that with the right training, and then you have this kind of like perfect uh, storm. Today's giveaway on YouTube. Maps Anabolic. To enter to win, leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we drop it. Subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. If you win, we'll let you know in the comment section. Now, this episode is brought to you by one of our sponsors, 8 Sleep. This is the most advanced sleep system in the world. It sits on your bed, controls the temperature of your bed, but it also reads your sleep cycles and uses AI technology to individualize how it operates on your bed to maximize your sleep. If you want the best sleep of your life, 8sleep, nothing comes close. Go check them out. Go to 8sleep.com forward slash mind pump. And on that link, you can use the code mind pump and get yourself $350 off the pod Four ultra. Also, this episode is all about training like an athlete. So here's what we did. Maps performance advanced. This is for athletes. This is a workout that'll make you move like one. It's 50% off for this episode. If you're interested, click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, back to the show. Their training is also extremely individualized. Very. So forget professional athletes for a second. If you took a kid all the way up through elementary school, junior high, high school, college, and pro level, if you started like that, the training doesn't get specific to that person. Or it, it's, it starts off somewhat specific, but the higher level they train, the more that they train, the, the more experience they get, the more specific their training gets. If you look at a pro athletes, uh, correctional exercise and training re regimen. It's very specific to that person. If you take an eighth grader, I'm just trying to get you stronger. You know, we're just going to squat. We're going to deadlift. A lot of fundamentals you got to work through. Yes. So their routine is their routine. Literally. It would be like saying if I put on their shoes, they're going to fit and I'm going to move like them. It's like, no, don't, they don't fit you. Well, to, to add to that point, a great example of this. I don't know if you guys watch. I know you don't, but maybe you watch the, did you watch the quarterback? Uh, there's now a wide receiver one on Netflix yeah. as a series. Mm -hmm. So they did, they did a breakdown of uh, Patrick Mahomes mm. and it was like really fascinating to see his trainer uh, train his, like the stuff that he's doing. Yeah. And when you get to that level, you are doing something that is so specific to a movement, a, pa a movement pattern that he does specifically yeah. all the time. His unconventional side throwing and right. all that. Yeah. And so now none of that matters or you never even get there if you didn't first lay a really solid foundation of the fundamentals first. Yeah. And so you have these young kids and even adults that see these athletes that look a certain way, that train a certain way, and they want to model that and they skip the all the foundational stuff like they have poor mobility they have a poor connection to certain muscles they don't even squat properly they don't do all these things which there's there is a whole host of years of gains and progress to be made just by doing the fundamentals and getting good at the fundamentals and because they were marketed to in a magazine article or a TV commercial and that's their favorite athlete and they aspire to be like their favorite athlete one day they want to jump to that athlete's current workout, at, but not realizing that there's been decades before that of a lot of foundational things that they laid and, first before they piled that yes, on. Yes, and it's not just individualized to that individual, uh, and it, they have a very unique um, you know, goal and body type and all that stuff. It's also individualized to the time of year, whether they're off-season or in-season, very different. The training's very different when you're in-season versus off-season. It's also individualized to whether or not the person has had previous injuries, mm -hmm. their energy levels, the position on the team that they play, the things that they need to work specifically on. So even if you do get a workout in a magazine or online that says, this is so-and-so's workout program, okay, 
is first of all, if, is it their workout program? Oftentimes, it's not their real no. workout program. And then when is this their workout program? Right. In season, off season? Was this how when they old were, were they when they did it? That's right. So it's individualized to such an extreme level that it doesn't. It's not even the best workout for that athlete at the wrong time. Mm-hmm. Not just you know barring whether or not it's a good workout for you or I or right. anybody else. Right. So it's so extremely individualized, and because their genetics are at such a an extreme level, they can do things or they they utilize things or they benefit from things that you might not necessarily benefit from. In fact, oftentimes, things that they would do that would benefit them would only injure you or set you back. That's the example I'm giving. If you right. saw the, you would understand. If you saw the Patrick Mahomes thing, the stuff he's doing yeah. seems well, a little ridiculous almost. Like they are teaching him to do like this spinal rotation and explosively and yeah. stuff like that. It's just like, yeah. dude, there's only one person in the world probably that's really, really yeah. beneficial to, and it's that guy right there because yeah. Yeah, he's I actually playing. I heard, it was, I think it was Joe Rogan was was kind of describing like it being an art in terms of like, like so your top tier fighter, for instance, like being able to train at a level and a threshold where you can you can squeeze out maximum potential and you know get that optimal uh, force established and that the the physique and everything to go with it in that temporary period of time to be at yeah. the absolute peak. It's unsustainable. Yeah. And this is this, but the portrayal of it uh, in the media is like, oh my god, this guy's in such great shape. It's like. You just get the visual of it. You don't actually understand the context of this is like absolute peak. It's unsustainable. Yeah. Uh, and, and immediately after that, it's all going to crumble. Yeah. And there's all, there's also the fact that these are professionals, meaning they don't do anything else. They're yeah. not they're yeah, this paid. Is, this is their thing. Yeah, they're, they're paid to eat, sleep, you know, recover. To to train hard to like stre- to to be redlining all the time like like they're paid to perform. Yeah. Uh, they can take naps. They can do things to enhance recovery. They can work out at any time of the day. They have people making their food, planning the workouts, um, giving them peptides or whatever. Uh, they this is their job. Uh, so it would be like if you had this job. If this is all you did, then your workout would very look very different for you as well, right? So. That also puts it in a category of probably and almost definitely not for anybody else but for this uh, particular individual. Yeah. And that makes a huge difference. Think about what it was like working out uh, before you had kids, right? Just that alone, right? That the, you, you had more time, you had more sleep, your body recovered differently, you felt differently. Uh, think about what it's like to work out um, and worry about working out when you have certain bills to pay or whatever. So um, they're paid to do this, and that means that they can – do and tweak and, and and train in ways that uh, they wouldn't even be able to do if they had to get a regular job. You know, it's, I, I'm thinking about a study that uh, we talked about one time that m- you're making me think too, like what else makes them so unique that they have the ability. And you have to think this plays a factor in their ability to perform better and be able to recover better and get better results from their training too is, you know, that study where I talked about they, they did the free throws with the athletes yeah. and they, they found that the athlete that didn't even do it, they just thought about it. They just visualized it. They visualized it that many times in the day, like that they improved their their performance just as much as the athlete that actually went out and shot the 100 or 1,000 shot, 1,000 free throws. I don't remember what it was, 100 or 1,000, something like that. And so to the point you're making about like these people are paid, like they don't just train and 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 then stop thinking about the training and they're like, they, they think about it. And I bet you guys have been in this space, sure. space before. I definitely was when competing. I was so... Yeah in the, the that mindset it was 24 7 like i when i ate was about it like i was sleeping the night before thinking about how i was going to train what i was going to yeah. eat the next day yeah. and like you got to think that that also plays a massive factor in the results that i'm getting out of that and because i can i can my whole mind is wrapped Dude, around guard just, reads and in in uh the the backfield like i all i could do all day long was like visualize like w- what that all indicated for me and where I needed to be on the field. And it was just repetition constantly. Just, I couldn't get it out of my mind because it was the most important thing for me to not get leveled or to make a play or to be effective. And you just have to think in that direction. If you're a top tier athlete, like all you can do is like obsess over like visualizing. Look, it. look, if you took a hundred fit people, a hundred fit regular people and you had them follow the exact workout routine of a high level athlete, those 100 fit people would get terrible results. They would get better results with a routine that was individualized for them, 
far better results. And I'm talking about fit, healthy people, let alone average person who's just getting into working out. If I took 100 average people and had them follow the routines of a pro athlete, I would, I would, we would get a 90% probably injury rate, <laughs> you know? Right, right. So the bottom line with this is if you train like your favorite athlete, you're going to get uh, terrible results. Now, this leaves us with the question of like, well, what do I do then? Right. Like, I don't, I mean, I feel like this whole time we're like completely just like shitting on somebody's dreams who wants right. to train to be like an athlete one day. It's like, hang on. It's not Hold that, up. it's not that bad. And by the way, it, uh, it's, it's easier. It's better. You'll yeah. get better results. And I think that's the, that's the, the desired outcome of an episode like this is to communicate to the aspiring uh, athlete or the athlete who's trying to aspire to be like the pro athlete yeah. is like, listen, there, there are proper steps to train like that, that athlete or to get to that level, but it's not emulating exactly what they're doing. It's figuring out what is best for your body, assessing where your current level is, addressing your current needs and laying a good foundation and then learning to build on top of that. And again, as you've heard us say many times on the show, like the goal is to do as little as possible to elicit the most change, not jump all the way to this level that a professional, very specialized athlete is training. That's the opposite of what's going to get you there the fastest or get you the most results. And so there is a way to do that. Yes. Now, the first thing you want to do as an athlete is uh, find if you have any imbalances or issues with stability or strength or flexibility and work on those because your performance oftentimes is limited by your weakest link, right? You're only as strong as the weakest muscle, or you can only move as fast as the, the slowest muscle that you have. You can only move laterally as fast as your stability will allow you to move. So imbalances are very important to identify for the average person who wants to train like an athlete so that they can bolster their joints and improve their ability to perform better. There's no leaks in strength, power, or speed when you don't have imbalances. I want, I want to give an example of this for the young athletes that are listening to, like an example of that. Okay, we, we have talked about before how much power is generated in the hips. And it's really uh, common for trainers to train somebody who has uh, weak and stable hips, especially discrepancies from left to right. So here's an example of we know that so much of your your power and force is generated from the power that comes from the hips and the hip complex. And we also know that many times when I assess somebody, there is a major discrepancy from left to right, or in, they're so weak, they don't even have good mobility in that. And so if I have that and I jump that client to training like Reggie Bush or Bo Jackson and with these crazy exercises, and I don't ad address this person's total instability and weakness in their hips, it's like literally throwing a thousand horsepower engine in somebody who has like, you know, has no traction on tires, no good suspension and a flat tire. Like it makes no sense. Like other than to say that you could do the thousand horsepower, it doesn't, it, you're not going to get the full It's like benefits. having cardboard axles. And yeah. You're, you're, you're going to rip right yeah. through it. And so, but what you'll get tremendous value from from is, is figuring that out is figuring out oh wow I have I didn't know that I have really weak hips or I have a really weak left side where I I can't do full internal rotation on that side and addressing the weak inst instability on that side and balancing that out lays a good foundation so then I can then layer on the power and strength to those hips and then all of a sudden I get compounding results from that this is an example of that yeah yeah I immediately think of and this is this is a bit more I guess for your your uh, your older seasoned uh, kind of athlete um, when when I actually decided well you know I'm gonna go ahead and do full contact football again and this is just something that like I haven't done it for well over a decade um, I'm I'm meeting with these other guys who I know haven't been keeping their body in the kind of shape where it's like we could move this quickly we could we could be explosive and we can take on this type of uh collision and impact um and the first thing i knew just based off of what i've understood about training clients and the importance of what you're talking about with with imbalances and dysfunction um and how much that impedes on performance you know that became gospel for me and this is what i was br bringing into mind pump it's 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 about assessing that it's about finding those opportunities uh to strengthen and stabilize around the joints because your whole body moves so much more effectively and you avoid injury and so that was our main focus and guess what we didn't have the same number of practices going into that uh game as as the other team and the emphasis was completely 
completely different. There was, it was all about, you know, strength training and then like, you know, practice and practicing, which, you know, to their credit in terms of like practicing the games, probably a better idea. Uh, but at least that was like the ground focus for us, which kept our team healthy. And also we were all moving at a, at a pretty quick pace. And so this was essential for us, uh, you know, to, to focus on that. First. Yeah. I mean, one way to do this, to maintain, um, uh, strength where you don't have many imbalances is to make sure you train in different planes of motion. Make sure you press uh, horizontally and vertically and you row and you pull down and you rotate and you move laterally, you move front to back, you do split stance exercises, bilateral exercises, you do unilateral exercise for your upper body and bilateral. Like if you train in different planes of motion, if your goal is to have good athletic performance, this is key. Because one thing a lot of people do too is they, especially for people working out for a long time, is they get really strong uh, in one plane of motion. And then when they go to play their sport, they're challenged outside of that and they get injured because they don't have a, a good balance. Yeah, they don't have a good balance of strength. Now, next is, sounds simple, but a lot, sometimes people forget this, is to practice your sport and practice it often. Workouts, sh you should never do more workouts than practicing your sport, unless it's off season, which is totally different. Practice is the most, playing your sport is going to make you better at your sport than anything, okay? Yeah. Back in the day, in fact, this is all people did. People didn't do workouts. They just played whatever they were going to you know, compete again more often. I've seen far too many times people who are really into a sport work out more than actually practice a sport. So like, oh, I do jujitsu right. twice a week. The skill the sport. And, yeah, I, I do jujitsu twice a week, but but I like to lift, I, I lift weights four days a week. Okay, well, what's your goal? Is it to be a bodybuilder? No. What's your goal? I want to be a great jujitsu guy. All right, drop three of those weight training days yeah. and go do jujitsu four days a week and it'll get far better. This has to be the most common piece of advice that we give because a very, very common question that we get is uh, athletes calling in um, that play sports but also want to lift weights or want to look a certain way. And we almost always follow that up with a question of like, what's more important to you? Are you trying to look Jack like a bodybuilder? Do you care more about that? Or do you care about your jujitsu, football, soccer, insert, whatever sport more often than not, they say like, Oh, I, I mean, I, my sport, that's my most important thing to me. And it says, okay, well then cut way back on the, the training. Well, mm -hmm. yeah, but I want to be stronger and more explosive and better at my sport. Yeah, okay, well, play your sport more. Yep. Nothing is going to make you better at that than doing that more. And in fact, you training too much, you're more likely to overdo it and impede on both. Yep. So not only get not get stronger because you're training three, four days a week, but also not be better at your sport. You're, you're shooting yourself in the foot even more than you think, and you're doing all this work. It would serve you to scale way back yes. on, on the training. And if you're going to add anything more to your routine, add another day of jiu-jitsu or add a day, another day of playing baseball totally. or basketball, and that is going to make you better at the sport. And you're more likely to probably build more strength and muscle that way. Right. Now, there are times when you do work out a little more than your sport, and that would be your off-season if your goal is to gain more size. And the next point, strength. Strength is the foundational physical pursuit for all the other physical pursuits, meaning – if you get stronger, everything else will improve. Some improve more than others, but everything gets better. If you get stronger, you also get faster. If you get stronger, you also get more stamina. If you get stronger, you tend to become more stable. If you get stronger, you're more powerful. So as an athlete, when you're doing your strength training, like strength is the key. Can I get stronger? Forget about how you look. It's all about what you can do. Because obviously you're competing in a sport, and that's all about what you can do. All right, here's where a lot of young athletes go wrong: is they see some again uh, pro athlete, they see a Patrick Mahomes, who's doing this really unique exercise uh, that he does to be able to throw the ball and whip it sidearm the way he does, and they go, "Oh man, I want to be able to yeah. do that." And then, but yet they can't even perform a proper barbell back squat very well. And they and and they're spending this time doing this very specific exercise to improve something, not realizing that the the benefits, the gains in their sport, the gains in overall strength that they're going to get by just learning how to perform a squat better and getting stronger from that movement is yeah. going to serve them ten times better than keep doing this single exercise that they saw on TV or read in a magazine right. some uh, athlete doing. And that is probably one of the biggest mistakes that young athletes make is they they jump past these 
foundational movements that that give us back so much ROI on our time of training and they skip to these movements that are like splitting hair make a difference better for you while you're leaving so much on the table by not perfecting that. So I find myself when I'm talking to a young man or woman under 20 who's trying to to be get be stronger, be a better athlete and they're like, "Oh, well, my, you know, my coach told me to this exercise and try this and I saw so and so doing these explosive ice skater jump to rings and do all this stuff and it's like, "Okay, well, let me see your 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 barbell back squat real quick." Mm -hmm. And they are they go do it and it's like they have terrible form, they're weak and it's like, "Oh my god, I mean, I guess we could do this exercise or we could spend some time really improving this movement right here, and you're going to get so much more. On the your only way you're going to go faster with speed, uh, have more snap, you know, get a higher vertical jump. You know, a lot of these like very specific attributes that a lot of uh, athletes want. You have to have that strength foundation for you to to pull from. You have to have that ability to summon and recruit. Uh, muscles and engage those muscles uh, at the time that you want them. And, and the louder signal you can produce, you know, the more powerful and explosive you're going to be. But that's all resting on the fact of, you know, you had this strong base already established and built, but you have to build it first. Totally. Now, finally, mobility for athletes is key. Mobility is your ability to move through a full range of motion with strength and stability. Mobility is key because it allows you to apply your strength in wider ranges of motion, in different directions. It means you're stable so you don't injure yourself. It means you don't have to get in the perfect position to exert the most force. As you know, with sports, your things don't often look perfect. You often have to throw or catch or run or get hit or whatever from weird angles. And mobility allows you to be able to express strength and stability in all those different angles. And if you're training to be to be like an athlete, your strength training needs to involve. By the way, this is true for everybody, I'll say. Everybody should have a mobility component in their training because you just get better results. You just get better gains, better results across the board. But this is especially true for anybody who's athletically minded. You want to have mobility in your shoulders and your spine and your hips and your ankles and your entire body, your wrists so that you can do more with the strength that you've built in the gym. You could do more on the field or on the court. And the only way to do that is to mm -hmm. practice your mobility, to work on your mobility, work in different planes of motion. It's key. Yeah. I mean, if you really want to bulletproof your joints and, and get to the position where it's like you, you can, you can actually find yourself in an awkward position, but you have the strength to su support and stabilize you with that. And then also you have the strength to move you out of that position. Uh, and it, it's crucial for an athlete to go through that and make sure that they're reinforcing a lot of these angles uh, and in introducing that so you're familiar with that placement of your leg. You're familiar with your arm in that position. Uh, and you can stabilize and support it uh, because now you can be a lot more effective. You're going to avoid injury, but really, too, uh, whatever movement you're you're doing, you're going to be more effective at that, whether it's slowing down or speeding up. Do you guys, what comes to mind um, for you when you think about most common uh, areas where athletes lack good mobility? And are there are there uh, common things, or is it so individualized that every athlete has something? Because I, I mean, I think right away, like with uh, the most limiting factor to a good squat is 80% of the time ankles, right? Yeah. Like ankle mobility uh, is, is probably one of the, the biggest key factors to a poor squat. Almost mm -hmm. always when I correct uh, that or I elevate their heels, I already see a dramatically improved squat. And I know if I can improve that, then I can improve power and strength. Power and strength then translates into the field or, or court, whatever they're playing. And so that's an easy one for me to, to address. Are there other areas... When you think, uh, when you look back to all the athletic uh, athletes that you guys train, that was like common common mistakes or misconceptions or areas that they didn't they didn't well, focus on. I think for most sports, not all, right? Some sports don't involve the lower body quite as much, but most sports involve some kind of running or jumping. Mm -hmm. So ankle and hip mobility is key. Huge. This yeah, is hip why, was probably the second one. Yeah, because this, this is why you see a lot of knee injuries. Yep. Knee injury because the knee, you know, it flexes and it extends, right? It just bends and straightens out. It doesn't really rotate. There's very little rotation in the knee. There's no muscles that rotate. It just has a little bit of give. Um, and it doesn't bend laterally. It just flexes and extends. But the ankle 
It rotates, it bends laterally, it flexes and it extends. The foot itself has some mobility. And then the hip is very mobile. Yep. If one of those, if the ankle or the hip lacks mobility and strength and stability in, in a particular movement, the ligaments of the knee got to hold the knee together so yeah. it doesn't fly apart. And so what ends up happening, oftentimes you see like, if I, I, could, I can name one injury in sports that most people have heard of. What am I going to say? ACL tear. Yeah. yeah. ACL tear. Yeah. ACL tear. It's usually the ligaments. Yeah. That, it's, that it's typically the knee. And I would say ankle, foot, and hip have got to be uh, the most common. Far yeah. more common. And then than pulled muscles as, as a result of yeah. compensating for the, this lack of stability yeah. in the hips a lot of times uh, that I've found with athletes. So it's like it, they're dropping like flies during season because – you know, th this is just an area of focus that they didn't place because, two, like, uh, it, it, even within the training cycles, a lot of times, like, old school, everybody's just doing sagittal plane only, and we're, we're never really reinforcing these, these lateral movements or these rotational movements. And so, again, to the unfamiliar uh, portion, the body wants to compensate, wants to tighten muscles to protect. And, and so, you know, athletes were fighting that a lot. And, and so mobilizing the hips was... Was tremendously effective. Is it fair to say that any injury that is self-inflicted, meaning that it wasn't acute from another athlete running into me, falling on me, banging into me, yeah. so something I did to like myself, I took off or I right, cut, right, right, or tore it, tore an Achilles, tore an ACL, rotated and something snapped, like is all of my in relation to uh, a, a reflection of my training and yeah. lack of, yes. yeah. of strength and mobility yes. and control in an area, right? Yeah, because you're if, moving your own body. Yeah. And so you lacked something to be able to stabilize your own body when you did something. That's different if someone runs in. Right, that's what I meant. Like that, and and obviously, uh, like I, right. so when I tore my ACL, it was actually going for a rebound and a guy fell on my knee, right? That's like literally yeah, landed on it in a position and, yeah. and it Sometimes went. Sometimes right? what are you going to do, right? Right. And so there's obviously injuries in sports many times that that happens, but yeah, there's also collision. a lot of injuries that happen when a wide receiver is going to catch a ball and a hamstring tears, yeah. yep. right? Or is, is turning to rotate a, a direction and they blow their ACL arms. Like, so... There are uh, the and when that happens, when it's self inflicted, right? That that is a direct reflection of your training or lack of training in an area, and I I don't think that's talked about enough. I think we see that and we go, oh, no, poor good thing. coaches talk about, especially strength conditioning coaches can point out, you know. Um, high level athletes that usually get knocked out like preseason and it's like, Oh my God, what happened? But it's like, you could tell right away what they didn't put into their training that led up to that result. Yeah. So, also yeah. reminds me of the great uh, interview that we did with Brian Kula, who mm -hmm. said that he knew Christian McCaffrey was going to have the career season that he had before he even had it. Because the way he was How playing. did he do that? Because what he, did he put in? Yeah, did he have telepathy? No, it's that no. he did all the work with him of training, and so he knew how bulletproof he was that year. And most now, of course, something you know rare, random could have possibly happened to him. But barring that, yep. he was positioning his body to be in the most optimal position to break a record or do have the best season. And of course, he did. Right. So. Yep. Perfect example of that, too. 100%. Now, if you want to follow a program that is athletically minded, a workout routine that is for those of you that want to move like an athlete, look like an athlete, perform like an athlete, we have a program called MAPS Performance Advanced. Within that, our scheduled skills day so we can play your sport. And then you have your workouts, your strength training, and more. And because we're doing this episode, it's 50% off. It's half off its normal price just for this episode. So if you're interested... You go to mapsperformanceadvanced.com and then you use the code ATHLETE50 for the discount. Also, you can find us on Instagram. Justin is at Mind Pump Justin. I'm at Mind Pump DeStefano and Adam is at Mind Pump Adam. 